Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day four of the Christmas Craft Countdown where I'm sharing 20 festive themed Cricut projects in 20 days. Half of the projects are designed by me and half are guest designer projects from some of my crafting friends. Today's project is by Lucy Foxworth and it's this stunning three-dimensional paper craft gingerbread house that looks good enough to eat. Lucy is the paper architect behind the captivating tiny house designs at paperglitterglue.com, often found covered in glue and cat hair and immersed in the details of her latest projects. Lucy is a crafting expert who loves sharing her knowledge so anyone can craft extraordinary creations. I love all the details in this gingerbread house. The icing patterns look so realistic and I can't wait to give this project a try for myself. Let's get started. The files for this project are free for the next 24 hours. Here's how to download them. First, register a free ticket for the Christmas Craft Countdown at craftwithsarah.com forward slash Christmas 23. Click any of the buttons on the page and enter your name and email to register. If you're already registered, check for an email from me with subject line Christmas Craft Countdown ticket information or any of the other emails from me that you have been sent throughout the countdown. Can't find them? Check your junk or spam box to see if they've gone there by mistake. These emails contain the link to view the countdown projects and download today's files. Scroll down the page to find today's project. Click the button to start the files automatically downloading to your computer or mobile device. Each download is only available for free for 24 hours after it goes live. If you've missed some, check out the Instant Access Bundle at craftwithsarah.com forward slash Christmas 23 bundle, which gives immediate and ongoing access to all of the files from the Christmas Craft Countdown, plus loads of extra bonus designs. All downloads come in zip folders. You need to unzip them before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Hey y'all, I'm Lucy. And my website's paperglitterglue.com, where I make a ton of 3D paper crafts, like little houses. Mm, almost always little houses. That's just what I have fun making. I started off with that, and I still love it years later. So for this, I came up with the idea of making kind of an easy gingerbread house. Let me see. This is a gingerbread house I made with gingerbread paint, and then used texture paste to pipe on it, just like you make a real gingerbread house. But I thought, we're all busy at this time of year, so let's do it the easy way. So I came up with this design, and uh, basically your machine cuts all the little pieces out, and all you have to do is glue it together, and it's really easy to glue it together. But then, so first I did this one, and then I did one in white, because I was going to paint it. I thought I'd paint it brown and just kind of see how it looked. And then I'm like, ooh, the white looks good. And I did a red background. And then I thought, mm, what about red? Oh, yes, red is good. So those are my, um, those are what I've made for this. And I even made one plain. So if you want to do, like I said, like you want to paint it and then add your own decorations, you can do it. Um, you can do that easily as well. So, the only thing hard about it, and it's pretty kind of aggravating, is you have to clean off all these little circles off your mat. That's a little bit aggravating, but, but the construction of the actual house is very easy. So, I hope you will join me making this little gingerbread cottage, and let's get started. Before we get started actually making the houses, I just want to show you a little bit more about them. I included a base for them because I just think it makes it safer. Like if they tip over or something, they're just kind of protected. I made these bases out of three layers of cardboard, uh, a thin cardboard. You can use cereal box cardboard, poster board, but um, it really does protect your little house. And there's a hole in the bottom and it's designed so you can put an LED light in or one of those little tiny light strings. And the other thing is I included, oh, let me just show you, the back's very cute too. I just put one window on the back. Um, the other thing is I included what I call a plain version, a plain file of making this little house, and I actually shrunk this down a little bit. 
And I did that because I thought, well, maybe you want to decorate your own little house. So, um, so I included, it's got the window cut out. It's got the door. It doesn't have windows themselves, just a, a door you can glue on. And the back piece, a plain chimney. And one thing I like to do is I love these white gel pens. This is a Uniball Signo. And uh, here, I'll just practice on like, this is a flap that'll be glued down. But you can do the color so beautifully on cardstock and just kind of play around. It, it might be fun for kids. So that's why I left, why I added just a plain version so you could decorate it in your own style. And maybe kids want a color, or you could name, you could put somebody's name on it for um, a little, um, what do you call it, place setting, placeholder at the table. I just thought that would be fun. So that's included, this plain one. And you make it exactly the same, except that you don't necessarily have to put a backing piece. You can, but you don't have to. So if you're wondering what the plain version is, that's what it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, show you how to cut these out in Cricut Design Space. And then, um, and then we'll go to the making, which is actually really easy. Uh, I, I, for the first time, I designed a really easy house. But I think because of the decorations on it, the cuts, cutouts on it, it has like a, a strong impact. So let's get started with the gingerbread cottage in Cricut Design Space. Okay, here's how you use Cricut Design Space, or rather, how you make the gingerbread cottage with Cricut Design Space. This is the opening screen for my Cricut Design Space, and they, ch they always change it just a little bit, but anyway, new project is this green button in the upper right-hand corner. So I'm gonna click New Project, and then I am going to browse I'd have to move something first. So I'm going to the upload button down here, upload. It's on the lower left side. And I'm going to upload image. And I'm going to browse my computer to find it with the green button in the center. And you can see I have like a ton of things. So now let's go to the gingerbread cottage files for the Christmas countdown. So I am going to use the regular version of the, um, of these files and let's click on that up open and this is how it works on my Mac it may be different on your machine this is the entire file so I'm going to upload it with the button the green button that was in the lower right hand corner now here is the file I clicked on it and so it makes a green line around it is that's how you know this file is selected so I'm going to add to the canvas and what I like to do is I like to see the entire file. So I reduce the size on the screen, not the actual size, just the size on the screen. So I'm hitting this minus button um, down in the lower left hand corner, minus. Let's do it one more time. 50%. Yes, I can see the whole file. And now in order to get the files ready for cutting, I'm going to ungroup. The ungroup button is under this layers panel on the upper right hand side, ungroup. And let's see if they are ungrouped and they are. Now one thing I want to show you is these are the background pieces that you glue behind the house so that the cutouts show up. I grouped them together so that they will fit on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. And if you just want, so you don't have to rearrange them or anything. So all you have to do, I would click attach. And then when you go to make them, they're already set up exactly the right way in a shape. You don't have to like move the shapes around trying to get them all to fit. And right now I'm going to work on the gingerbread cottage pieces. So I'm going to hide this. So I've attached them. I just do this little eye icon here. This is under the layers panel. And this is the group I just attached. So I'm going to click the eye icon. And so I'm hiding them for, for now. Okay, the other thing is I usually 
put a almost always put a one inch square so you know that the scale has been um, added to design space in the scale that I wanted so it's the right scale so it's usually one by one and that's what it should be and once that's done if you're not going to resize things um, I will I just delete it now I mentioned earlier that I don't think reducing the size of this will work very well because these dots are pretty tiny and while the Cricut might cut them out, it does it, uh, some of them are so small, it doesn't cut them consistently if you make it smaller. So I don't really recommend reducing it, but if you want a larger size, these are about, let me measure, I think they're four, they're about, they're four inches, yeah, they're four by four, four inches wide, four inches tall at the peak, and two inches um, deep. So I did that because that fits nicely on two sheets of cardstock, but, so, but you could make them bigger. So anyway, I'm not messing with the size, so I'm going to delete this. I can hit the delete key or do the trash key, and there. I did that. Okay. Next, we need to do score lines. And whenever I have score lines, I always... Um, they they show up under the layers panel as individual lines, and I I combine them so that Cricut knows to to do exactly the same thing with them. So if you were using foil, it would foil them. If you were doing um, debossing, it would deboss. But obviously, what we want to do here is score. And the other thing I did was I actually, for the lines on the house itself and the chimney, I actually duplicated it five times and I combined them so that the Cricut Maker or Cricut Explorer 2 understands that, that these lines are to be scored five times. So it goes over, like you can see this house shape, it goes over this house shape five times, which makes a really decent score line. I really like that. So rather than you having to duplicate it, I combined them so that Cricut knows to do it for you. So if you're wondering why why the scoring, whatever scoring tool you're using is going over and over and over, that's because I layered five lines together to make it to make them deeper. And I did that for the house the back of the house, the chimney, but I only did it twice on the on the roof um, just because it's much easier, it's much simpler. Also, the other thing I did was I, um, because these score lines are close together, I actually made them a little longer than the chimney pieces so it would be sure and score all the way through. So um, just to, trying to make them a little easier to fold. Whenever score lines are close together, they can be a little challenging. Alrighty, so let's change our score lines to score. Oh, and you have two options. You have one kind of this cut out brick option and one sort of an abstract, sort of a vaguely fleur de lis um, design. So here are the lines, here are the score lines. So you click on those lines and you'll notice that when you click on them, this box turns red. That means I drew those lines in red. And I always do my score lines in red to make it easier for you to determine is this line a score line or a cut line. But it really you know, should be obvious that these are score lines, so score. And so then under the operations menu on the left, I think this is left, yeah, left upper side, we go down and we go into the draw section and there is score, we'll click score. And when we do that, those lines turn into, let me enlarge it a little bit, dashed lines. I think you can see that. They're dashed lines. Okay, I'm going to reduce again. And But the important thing is you have to tell your Cricut that these score lines belong to this piece, so you have to attach it. Otherwise, it'll just score some the lines some random place, so attach. And let's do that with the other chimney piece. Oh, I don't think I did that one right because it didn't turn red. I'll fix it before I send the file out. Score, attach, and let's do the same with the roof. 
Here's the root. I click on the roof piece. I see the line here. I'm going to click on it. It's red. Score. Click on the entire piece. Attach. The back side of the house. Click on the score lines over in the layers panel. It's red. Score. And then click on the entire piece. Attach. Same thing to the front piece. You can see the score line, kind of the complicated little score line. I'm going to click on those lines, score, attach. And now we're ready to cut it out. Um, I'm going to hide, the, hide this for now. And what I do, I think this makes life easier. I'd rather arrange them on this screen of design space, the canvas, rather than on the mat. So one thing, this is kind of fun to do. You go to the shapes over here on the left, the shapes menu, and I pick the square, or you could pick a rectangle either way. And here is my square. That's not what I meant to do. I meant to just move it. All right, you can change the size by, I unlock it here. And I make it about the size of my cutting, uh, the size that the Cricut will cut. So I make it 10.5 inches by 8.25. I'm sorry. And, and that is the approximate size my Cricut will cut on my card stuff. Okay, so then I'll, I'll pick out, oh, Let's send it to the back so we can layer our pieces on top and arrange them. So I'm going to this Arrange menu here. I'm going to send it to the back. And now I'm going to arrange my house pieces so that I can tell what fits on one sheet of cardstock. So let's do one of the chimneys. And that's about all that's going to fit on this piece of cardstock. These are the pieces that fit easily. I really, you know, I mean, you could just barely squeeze them in, but it basically takes two sheets to do this. So now we can move this aside. And if you will attach all these things here, when you go to cut it out, you don't have to do much rearrangement. Same thing. If we want the base, if you want the base out of cardstock, or maybe you don't want to paint your base, I painted mine. But if you don't want to paint them, you can um, just do it out of cardstock and maybe glue it to some cardboard. So same thing. We've arranged it on our sheet of, um, our kind of our sample sheet of cardstock. And you can either delete this at this point or hide it. I'm going to hide it. And I'm going to attach all of these. And now when I go to make these, they're already arranged. So I'm going to click Make It, the green Make It button in the very upper right-hand corner. If you choose 8.5 by 11, it changes it around. And I just leave it like this because I know I made it to fit by 8.5 by 11. But if you want to choose your material size exactly, you can do that. So And it will, it will fit it on the, on the mat. But I don't, I don't usually bother with that. I just leave it in the, um, the 12 by 12 because I know I already arranged it. So, okay, continue. Now, I'm using a maker, but you can use a, this is small enough, you can actually use a Cricut Joy. You do need a tool of some kind to score, which would be either uh, you can use the foil tool to do it, or you can buy a third-party adapter to put in a, the scoring stylus. Um, you can use the Joy, the Explore Air, any of the makers. So I'm using a maker with my maker. So um, lightweight, like 65-pound cardstock, I would use this one. If I use heavier paper, 110 cardstock or the watercolor paper, I use this this choice. These are my um, my popular kind of bookmarked materials that I use all the time. Okay, so let's go to cardstock for intricate cuts. I almost always click more. It works on my machine. You may have to experiment on your own. And then the other thing is I really don't like switching out 
the uh, blade and the scoring wheel. So I almost always use my scoring tool. Scoring stylus here. I choose that under tool options, option, and then apply. And now you load the mat and, um, and then click make it and then click the little go button. Okay, let's get started making the little gingerbread house. And I'll show you a couple of versions. This one kind of surprised me. It was really an experiment, but it's a white um, watercolor paper with red cardstock behind. And I'm really tickled about how it looks. And then this is the one that's supposed to mimic gingerbread. This was one of my first prototypes. And I, I think it's really cute as well. So I'll show you what you need to make the gingerbread house. Simple glue. I'm using Barely Art glue. I like how little the tip is, how easy it is to squeeze out just small blobs, and um, and it adheres fast. So I really like Barely Art glue. You do need a ruler because we're going to have to fold along some score lines that have a lot of decoration around them, and it's much easier if you can kind of hold them down with the uh, ruler. You need a little stylus of some kind because it helps you poke through any holes that uh, didn't come up when you remove the cutout house from the mat. So sometimes it cut beautifully and I hardly had to do this at all, but sometimes um, if I didn't run it through an extra time, I might have to poke out a lot more holes. It's a little bit frustrating, but you know, that's the truth of it. It just really helps with the stylus. I think it's worth it because I think these little tiny designs are what makes it so appealing. Then you need cardstock of some kind, paper of some kind. This is 65 pound cardstock. It's very flexible. Uh, I believe it's about 176 gram cardstock. This is an eight and a half by 11 piece, and you need two pieces for the outside structure of the house. I also did 110 pound cardstock. See how it's just sturdier, it's not quite as flexible, and that worked well on my Cricut as well. I used a Cricut Maker. You can use the Cricut Explore Air, or um, and it's small enough that you can do it on a Joy. This length is four inches, so it should work on a regular Joy. Um, I didn't cut it out on a Joy, but I know I've done um, this depth of cardstock on a Joy. So you can make this on a, a Cricut Joy and certainly you can make it on the Cricut Joy Extra. And then this is watercolor paper. This is the paper brand I use and it's 300 gram, 140 pound, 300 gram paper, nine by 12. And that cut out beautifully and that's what surprised me. That's what I used for this one, for this house. Um, so all of them work, and I just wanted to know you to know what your options are. And the inner pieces, the background pieces, all of those you can cut with just one sheet of paper. I used a regular standard mat. I actually bought a new mat for this, and it's actually fairly sticky. I do think you need a sticky mat for this because all these little pieces, if you're trying to cut intricate pieces and your mat isn't sticky, your paper can kind of come up and it will tear and it won't cut through. So I do think you need a fairly sticky mat. You can use the uh, a, a light grip mat that has um, some good stick to it or a standard grip mat. That's what I use. But again, I use mine so much that they're it, it's even though it's relatively new it's also been used like for days at a time so it's not like crazy sticky but it does but the paper does adhere well okay now I'm going to show you how to put the little house together these are all the pieces for the brown gingerbread version this is the front and the back let's fold along all the score lines and here you can see one at this corner circle didn't poke out, so I get my little pokey thing. And get rid of that. Any others? That little circle's not completely removed. Let's fold along the score lines. This is the side that my Cricut scored on. So this score line is indented here. So I fold four towards myself at first and then away. 
So I'm going to line up my ruler along the score line and then fold towards myself. And when I'm sure that's good, then I'll fold away. And again, I need my ruler to stay here because the cardstock wants to bend with all this with all these cutouts, so I'm going to use my ruler here to support the paper and now we have a good score line and we'll do that to all of these pieces the side ones are a little easier it's the angled the angled score lines that are a problem or a little more delicate this piece is ready we'll do the same on the front piece The roof has a score line as well, and little score lines on the chimney. All right, we can go ahead and start with the chimney and apply the background pieces. Just apply a little glue. match up the piece that it fits with. They're, they're slightly narrower than the chimney itself. Make sure they don't obscure the score line, that they don't make it hard to fold along a score line. So they kind of fit in the middle of the section. This is the glue tab and it goes on the inside. And there's our red chimney option. Now let's glue the backing pieces to the main body of the gingerbread house. And I really like how the Barely Art glue works for this because I can do just little dabs to hold down all these decorative elements to adhere the, the front piece to the backing. If you want it to be translucent so you can add a, maybe a tea light inside, you could use vellum. I haven't experimented with vellum, but you could do vellum. Or you could actually just use regular copy paper. That's pretty translucent. 65 pound cardstock will shine, you know, is, is a little bit translucent. This is the 140 pound watercolor paper and it's not very translucent at all. So light's not really gonna shine through this. Oh, I forgot. First thing, gotta get the door in place. Now the problem with the door is I don't want it to block, I don't want the red to show through on these little circles around the door. So I'm just gonna lightly edge the door cut out because my door is really kind of skinny. Okay, let's look inside. Make sure that looks okay. Yeah. All right, now we can add the white piece. I always forget the door. I like the red door on the dark gingerbread version. Yes, okay, make sure you're not obscuring any of the score lines so everything can fold, and it does. See, isn't it cute? I was so happy when I came up with this design. I had another one before and it was okay. But then this one came to mind and I'm like, mm, yeah, this is the way to go. These inner pieces are just slightly smaller than the outside piece. They're like 98% of the outside piece to give you room at the score lines to fold it so it won't you know add bulk at the score line and make it hard to fold your house and glue it together oh and this rectangle is slightly taller than wide so it fits you know up and down the tall side 
is up and down. So let's make sure. Yep. It's good, isn't it? Okay, now let's do the back piece. The back piece. And I'm applying glue to the decorative side because I, I, I want to minimize any glue bleeding through on the front. There's always some that ends up showing through, but I, I'm really trying to minimize it. And I'm trying to glue down these little scallop pieces. I don't want them poking out. You could have them do that, but I'm just trying not to. Oh no, I just heard Bill. I hope he won't jump up here. He can be a camera hog. Bill is cat, I should say, should specify. He's a cat. Usually Alley Cat jumps up here, but not when Bill's around. She doesn't like Bill. Okay, I think that is what I want. Here's the backing piece. Center it. Make sure it doesn't interfere with my folds, and it does not. There we go, another one. Okay, now we're going to glue it together. So this is the glue tab. I'm going to apply glue on the outside, you know, the good side, so that it adheres to the front piece. So we can glue the four houses, four sides of the house together. So one, two, one, two three, and this is the back side, the fourth side. And the safe thing to do at this point is to put it down and let it dry. I'm going to be bold and keep going. So make sure you line up this edge and apply pressure along the glue along the seam. Okay, alrighty. This is the other glue tab. Apply glue on the outside of it. And when I say outside, I mean it looks like the outside because this is the outside of the house, but it actually goes in here. And once again, we'll line up the edges. Pin particular attention to the bottom edge so the house will stand straight. And that's it. So we've we've inset this back piece so it goes inside the front piece. Now these are roof flaps and these are roof tabs. The gluing part I call the tab. And the roof flaps are kind of structural. They help keep the house square and it also provides a gluing surface for the tabs. So the roof flaps go inside and we can apply glue to the tabs. Fold our little tabs down. You can just hold them a second. Barely Art Glue really does hold well. I mean, you can use any of the white glues, but some adhere faster and are stronger. They have a higher percentage of resin in them, and they're just stronger. The more water that's in a glue, you know, the thinner the glue, takes longer to dry because, in effect, the water has to evaporate. So there's not a lot of water, you know, in the Barely Art glue. It's not very watery. Now, let's glue the backing pieces to the roof and these are ex are the same width as the roof piece but they're a little bit shorter because I didn't want them to interfere with the fold mechanism with the score line. So again I'm applying the glue to the part to the decorative part. Now I'm going to kind of center it Ooch it down just a tiny bit. There we go. Let's do the other side. Okay, that looks good. Now we got our roof. Let's see what a nice structure this is with the roof flaps holding the roof tabs down. It's much sturdier. Now Apply some glue for the roof. And we have a good gluing surface for the roof as well. Pl 
face the roof. And then you have to kind of center it to make sure it's about even front and back. That looks good. Put your hand inside if you need to, but try to make sure you don't skew it so you don't angle it a little bit, but that looks good. Now we have to decide on which chimney. I think it's pretty obvious. The red chimney came unglued. Yeah, no question. Going with the red chimney. So let's glue the red chimney in place. I think, you know, I've experimented with different ways to do chimneys and I just think the simplest thing is to just glue them on. I don't put any tabs or anything on the chimney because I think that adds bulk at the base of it and actually makes it harder to adhere. So if you really want it to stick fast, then uh, you can let the glue get just slightly tacky where it loses its shine. Might take a minute or more, but you know, we're gonna be bold. I'm just going to adhere it and let it dry and just kind of leave it alone. I, we got our houses done. Aren't they cute? I'm so excited. They worked out so much better than I thought. And they're easy. The only thing, the hardest thing is really cleaning your mat because all these little cutouts are stuck on the mat. That was the part I disliked the most. And, and every once in a while, if I didn't run it through twice or... If there was something on my mat, a little bit of debris, and it wouldn't adhere, then I had to, you know, do the whole pokey thing. Burp, burp, burp. It's an easy house that's so cute. Okay, I'm going to let these dry, and I hope you will make it. Okay, now that you've seen how to make this adorable little gingerbread cottage, I hope you will go out and make it and have fun. And then um, if you really liked this craft, I have a ton of patterns and kind of neat things to make on my website, paperglitterglue.com. I even made, I call these tiny ornaments. I made some little tiny ornaments that you can hang and I made and I modified them a little bit so you can use them on uh, mason jars. So these are called, I think the the post is called, the tutorial is called Tiny Paper Houses on Mason Jars, something like that. And I just think they're so cute and make a really nice little gift and then people can actually use them as ornaments afterwards. Or if you want to make something big, I've got a workshop on how to make these, um, this, um, it's an Alpine uh, village wreath. So I've worked on that. These houses are more involved, but I just love how they look. And, and if you make something like this, it's almost like making an heirloom for your family. It takes time but I've kind of come up with some sort of secret, some ways to do it. So you can do a little bit at a time. You could just add a, a couple of houses a year and then, um, and then add them to your wreath and decorate it as you go. So anyway, I hope you will join me on my website, paperglitterglue.com and consider like um, getting the Alpine Village Wreath Workshop. It's so good. All right. Y'all have a good day. Whatever you're doing, have fun crafting. Okay, bye. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a 3D gingerbread house for Christmas. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more cricket crafts and festive fun. Don't forget the link to get the cut files for this project it's craftwithsarah.com forward slash Christmas 23, but they are only free to download for 24 hours after this video goes live. I hope to see you tomorrow for day five of the Christmas Craft Countdown. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.